It's interleague play as two franchises loaded with tradition get set to square off in Philly. The American League New York Yankees and the National League Philadelphia Phillies clash next on Monday Night Baseball. ESPN's Monday Night Baseball is presented by TD Ameritrade. We welcome you to Philadelphia for tonight's game. It is the first of three. The Yankees and the Phillies meeting as interleague play continues in Major League Baseball. And the matchup tonight for the New York Yankees, the hope is that the tough times he had at the start of the year may be ending as the big unit, Randy Johnson, 8-5, and five, will be on the mound for the Yankees. For Philadelphia, it's trying to find enough starters to keep it going. It'll be Brett Myers, who is 4-3, but a very respectable 3.86 ERA. He'll be on the mound for Philadelphia. Welcome, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne, along with Rick Sutcliffe. Duke Castiglione will be joining us down on the field. For the New York Yankees, the story right now, Rick, is they are still in the contest. Even though they've got people like Matsui out, they've got Sheffield out, they have to go to the well to their leaders they have, and they look to their captain. Well, and I think Derek Jeter right now is better than he's ever been, so much so that I think he's the MVP of the American League. He comes into play tonight hitting 340. He's going to score 100 runs. He may drive in over 100 runs this year, and he's on his way to his third straight gold glove. But those are statistics. Those are awards. Those are things that mean absolutely nothing to Derek Jeter. What's important to him is to get the Yankees back to the postseason for his 11th straight year and a chance to win that fifth World Series ring. Philadelphia is having to contend with the New York Mets, a red hot team and a very good one in their division. They are looking to the Bobby Abreu's and the Ryan Howard's, but they won't be doing that tonight. Tonight they look to another name you may not be quite so familiar with, Chase Sutley. Well, Randy Johnson is on the mound, as you mentioned earlier, and most of the time, even the great left-handed hitters, they're going to take the night up. They're going to find something wrong, some way to get out of that lineup. But not Chase Utley. Not only is he in the lineup tonight, but he's hitting third for Charlie Manuel. The reason he's leading the National League second baseman once again in hits, runs, and homers, it doesn't matter to Chase Utley if he's playing second base, if he's playing first base, or where he's hitting. He knows that he's important to this ball club. He knows they need to win tonight. And he's in the lineup for Philadelphia. It's about trying to catch the Mets or the wild card. We'll have a chance to talk about that. And for the Yankees, they are chasing Boston down. Philadelphia's Utley at second base with both the glove and the bat has made some statements this year. And for the Yankees, when it gets tough, you look to the people who play that way better. None more so than Derek G. Baseball is next. ESPN's Monday Night Baseball is presented by the new TD Ameritrade, the independent spirit, and in part by State Farm. Great service and great rates. You can get it all from State Farm. And Heineken, it's all about the beer. Just a full house here tonight, and it's available to you in stunning, the never underestimated ESPN HD. Yankees and the Phillies set to go. We're in Philadelphia, Citizens Bank Park, known for giving up some home runs and extra base hits. This is a hitter's ballpark, generally. We'll see whether or not that stays that way tonight. During our ball game tonight, a look back, a World Series 1950 and some familiar faces that have grown a little bit older. Sut talks with Ryan Howard, not old at all, young and a Rookie of the Year trophy on the mantle. And the all-star time is coming. Who would your picks be? Would the Yankee captain be in there? Rick and I will show you our lineups during the ball game here tonight. Joe Torrey already sitting and watching 11th all time in wins 1914th is 11th season surviving the boss about 8000 players and winning all the way through it. Here's the starting lineup that the New York Yankees will put out on the field tonight here in Philadelphia. We'll talk about it a bit. Note they've got Bubba Crosby back in right field. I tell you what, Joe Torre, after watching batting practice here in this hitter-friendly ballpark, he had to think about putting himself in the lineup, but he loves having Robinson Cano in there. Look at those numbers, and look at what he has done this month. 0 for 4 yesterday, still hitting 424 in the month of June. And pitching for Philadelphia, 25-year-old right-hander. Well, he was outstanding in his first 12 starts. He has really struggled. His last two, he needs to step it up tonight. Johnny Damon stands in, and we are underway as he takes a strike from Myers. 
First game of three in interleague play between the Yankees and the Phillies. You see the 19 career leadoff home runs that he has put up. Johnny Damon will go behind on the count here quickly 0 and 2. Damon off to a fine start again and doing exactly what the Yankees hope. Well the one thing watching the Yankees take BP hitting a lot of homers they got to be careful. And he got him. Good off speed delivery. Both of these teams have not exactly sparkled defensively this season. Well you take a look for the Philadelphia Phillies though out there in center field. Aaron Rowan look at that three errors in 56 games this year. We have seen him constantly on baseball tonight with the web gems and I'm telling you right now Carl Ravage I'm not trying to predict your show but if that's not the web gem of the year I haven't seen it yet. Paid for that one didn't he. Well, he will chase him down and he's got a long way to go. It's 401 to dead center field but 409 into the well and left center field. Cabrera takes that one the other way. Pat Burrow was playing very deep and a very long run and will not be able to get there. And uh, Milky Cabrera behind uh, on the count. This uh, you're right Rick this catch not just for this year but for the ages. Well we saw the toughness that he brought to the world champion Chicago White Sox last year playing center field for them. They tried to get some padding here in time to put it up because they knew they had to do that in Chicago because of the way he challenges fly balls. They didn't get up in time and it cost him. Milky Cabrera pops that one up to the first base side. Nunez at second base will put it away and there are two away here in the first inning so Myers gets a couple of quick outs. Let's take a look behind home plate tonight his ninth year at the big league level Kerwin Danley a former teammate of Tony Gwynn at San Diego State. He's got a small strike zone you know that he's going to favor the hitter as he did and at times he can be a little inconsistent and if there's any problems it'll come from the pitchers tonight Myers and Randy Johnson disagreeing with him. Here is Derek Jader the Yankee captain that we were talking about batting third in the lineup as Joe Torre has put him back into that third spot in light of the fact that you've got Sheffield and Matsui out of the lineups all those home runs all those RBIs missing. He has come back with a 340 batting average 432 on base percentage takes the fastball inside and the count will even itself up to one and one. Now you mentioned all the injuries that they have not been able to play through Matsui and Sheffield maybe not back the rest of the year Jeter himself has been banged up but somehow continues to play. Somehow the Yankees find a way to win Myers comes in with a little chin music right there Jeter who loves to lean out over the plate rocks himself away. You know and the Yankees have been seeing a lot of this as of late teams are just getting tired of them diving and yanking and driving that pitch on the outside corner with authority. If he goes away he does boy he set him up perfectly on that pitch. Two ball two strike count Gary just like you say that was the purpose for going inside so that you can free up the outer half of the plate and he does it. It wasn't 102 miles an hour but I guarantee you it was in the upper 90s. He was 13 and 8 last year. Myers on the mound for Philadelphia. Trying to have a 1 2 3 inning with a 2 2 delivery. Sweeping breaking ball that misses outside. 3 and 2. Trying to get Jeter to chase. Jeter's got a great hitter's eye, obviously, and he doesn't go after one very often outside. That last pitch was the difference a year ago, the best year in the career of Brett Myers. That little cut fastball on the outside corner. 3 2 delivery to Jeter, and he draws the walk. There's the patience of the Yankee captain that forces the inning to go on. And Jeter gets a two out walk, bringing the cleanup batter to the plate and giving them a chance here in the first inning. And there's no one, Ryan Howard including, that put on a better show in batting practice than did this man, Jason Giambi. With Jeter on base now, an opportunity for the Yankees to take the early lead. He is tied for fifth at home runs in the league. He is 10th in the league at RBIs. Jabby with a runner at first base and the pitch is taken down low for a ball. Myers desperately wants a good start for what Rick was talking about. The last two outings have been disasters. He had Washington on the ninth three innings. He gave up six runs seven hits last outing 14th against the Mets two and two thirds innings. He gave up six runs on nine hits. I mean just two really bad starts that he's trying to overcome here in this game against the Yankees. Well and coming into his last start Brett Myers had not been scored upon in the first inning. 
He had some defensive problems behind him, but all of a sudden an error was made, and he wasn't the dominant pitcher that he was before that play had happened. 25 years of age. 2-0 delivery. That's going to be a base hit. They had the shift on. Jeter will take the turn. He's going to go for the extra base. No one's going to go get him there. And there's what Jeter helped set up after he fell behind in the count through the walk. Giambi gets a single. You're exactly right. I mean, it, it was absolutely nothing. A two-out base on balls. But he had to battle just to get that. And all of a sudden, he keeps the line of moving. An opportunity here with runners at the corner for Alex Rodriguez to get one in the air and, again, get that early lead. So A-Rod is coming to the plate with two down. For all of the negatives that have that he has suffered through particularly in New York this year a lot of it's revolved around his glove and the air is at third base. He has been a very productive offensive player for this Yankee team with some really big hits that uh, kind of getting overlooked. He's having a very tough June hitting just 212 so far in the month of June. Despite that though he's 299 with runners in scoring position and he's among the league leaders in go ahead and game winning RBIs. He's got runners at first and third here with two down the 0 1 delivery to him almost caught the jersey. And how soon they forget the American League player of the month in May. Brett Myers not forgetting that he remembered how it opened up the outside corner in the earlier at bat with Jeter maybe trying to do that again now. Well, he's got a chance right here. A Rod does to put some positives up. Takes the breaking ball away and a two ball, one strike count. He is coming out of a slump that he had been in. They hope, he hopes, if it had not been for the fact the Yankees lost two out of three against Washington, they probably would be talking about A Rod and his back. But because the Yankees lost games and lost them late, it's been more about the negatives than the positives. He'll take that pitch down low. Now he was two for two yesterday. He hit a home run on Saturday. So that's the signs of coming out that I'm sure hitting coach Don Mattingly and A Rod have been looking for. There you see what we're talking about with the first nine games. Not good. Last five games, outstanding. Three ball, one strike delivery to him. Wow. How does this happen? You had an inning that looked like it was going to be a piece of cake for Myers, and now the bases are loaded with two down. I'll tell you how it happened. <laughs> That's what being a captain is all about. Derek Jeter with two strikes. He didn't give in. He never gives an at bat away. And I think right now that the people voting for the MVP in the American League have recognized all of the little things that he has done for years now to help this team win. Amazing. The Yankees have a chance here in the first inning with Jorge Posada coming to the plate. Bases loaded and two away. Philadelphia obviously concerned here and trying to settle Myers down as he's fallen behind on hitters after he got the first two outs. First two batters he retired on six pitches. The next three have reached with two walks and a single. Yeah, He threw at least that many to Derek Jeter. The pitch count is up the complete game probably over because of what has happened here already. In those last two starts we were talking about the reasons he wants to get out of this inning now. But a Posada pops that one up third base side Bell. Their territory has got it. And Myers is out of it. No runs, one hit, no errors. The Yankees leap, the base is loaded. The big unit, Randy Johnson, takes the mound when we come back. Overcast skies, temperature in the mid 80s for the game here in Philadelphia. A little light rain, very light just before the game started, but a full house on hand here in Philadelphia. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Phillies. Victorino, who's batting in the number two spot, Nunez down number eight spot. A couple of changes in the lineup we'll talk about. Not in the cleanup spot, though. No one in the history of baseball changes the look of a lineup like Randy Johnson does. But Pat Burrell is in there. Last year, 32 homers and 117 RBIs. He's on pace to do even more than that this year. Speaking of the 41-year-old lefty. Talking to him earlier this year, he said his key 
is still early in the game to establish the fastball in. Eight wins on the season. You see the strikeout number way down. He said, even if I'm not throwing 98, I still have to get the fastball in, prove that I can throw it for a strike. Everything else comes off of that. Everything was working for him in his last start, Gary. In all those days on the National League, he's seen a lot of these hitters before and hopes the Yankee defense behind him will help out. I'll tell you what, this kid in left field's pretty good. Six outfield assists already. That's tied for the American League lead. Only one error, as you can see, in the 36 games. Robinson Cano, a year ago, got an opportunity. It's Cabrera's turn this year. Both of them look to be good players. New York Yankees. Needing a little help defensively for their pitchers. Only Toronto, Cleveland, and Los Angeles have lower fielding percentages in the American League. Rollins is going to lead it off. He has faced Randy Johnson a number of times. Five for 15 with a home run against him. Johnson in with a strike. Rollins, one of a number, including Burl, Bell in particular, who's seen uh, this big left-hander before. Right back to the mound. Just big enough to haul that one in. Two pitches and an easy out. Rollins retired. It has been a, a very tough season for Charlie Manuel. At the beginning of the year, the team didn't play well. The talk started immediately in just his second season about changing managers. Then the team went on a streak and won. It all stopped. They haven't played well of late. It's all started up again. It's been just a roller coaster for him dealing with the stories about whether or not he ought to continue to be manager of this team. Victorino up takes the pitch inside for a ball. How can a kid who grows up in Hawaii end up playing baseball in Philadelphia. <laughs> Just lucky I guess. That's where he's from. Here's the 1 0 delivery. One ball one strike count. He has been lucky he's been lucky twice. He's been a rule five guy or a team picks him up out of the minor leagues. They take a chance on him. Well, he put it together last year. MVP of the International League. Starting in right field tonight with the left-hander Randy Johnson on the mound. As Rick said, when Johnson pitches, lineups get shuffled. A lot of left-handed hitters do not want to face Randy Johnson. A lot of good left-handed hitters. Ryan Howard and Bobby Abreu. That is a lot of Charlie Manuel's offense not in the starting lineup tonight. Victorino takes that one down the right field line. And that'll end up in the seats. Speaking of Mr. Manuel, let's check in with Duke Castiglione. Duke. Well, I tell you what, Gary, they've been on Charlie Manuel here in Philly, and everybody wondering, will Charlie Manuel take the hit for this team not playing well? Well, yesterday, Pat Gillick, the general manager of the Phils, came out, gave Manuel a vote of confidence, and said the status with the manager is unchanged. Listen, guys, we've had a lot of injuries. Now, when reporters asked Manuel, are you worried about your job, Manuel said, Hey, the day I worry about my job is the day they put me in the grave. <laughs> that one's going to be handled by A-Rod. Victorino is retired, two down. He's been worried. If you're a manager, if you're going to worry about your job, you worry about it from the day you get hired. <laughs> This guy's not going to worry about anything. Look at what he did last year in his first year with the Phillies. 88 and 74. Only two games out in the National League East. Only one game out of the wild card. And how about the revolving door that he has had with his starting rotation? No John Lieber. No Randy Wolf. They could be back soon. And so could the Phillies. Chase Utley. If they're going to get back in it. One of the prime reasons. This left-hander is in there. And he's playing first base for the first time this year. As the lineup gets juggled, it also makes changes in the infield. So Utley, who normally is a second baseman and a very good one, puts on the first baseman's mitt for this game for the first time this season. Swung on and missed. No chance on that one. And quickly 0-2. And quickly, it's easy to see why most left-handers take the night off against a big unit. Man, just so hard to hang in there when he drops down towards first base with that tremendous height. Looks like Monk Kilimanjaro coming at you. That one's going to be fouled off. So he has thrown a nine strikes, one ball so far. Take a look at the K zone here. Up in the zone. Look at the quickness with the hands of Utley just to get a piece of that pitch. Now you try and put one in fair territory. Light breeze blowing out towards right tonight. 
boy he got around on that but it was inside and he cranks it foul he had that head out on that ball he did and he had a real good pitch to hit here again a mistake on the part of the breaking ball which is what has cost Randy Johnson a lot of home runs this year take a look at K zone here brought to you by Nationwide that was supposed to be down and off the outside corner right on the inner half of the plate. Utley really wishing he could have that swing over again. Utley's hitting 302 against left handers even a few points higher than against right handers and you can see he is battling here. He's hanging in there with the changes. We talked about Bobby Abreu being out there. So is Ryan Howard. He's watching when you talk about a big bat 22 homers last year you mentioned the National League Rookie of the Year. He's already hit more home runs this year than he did a year ago and we're not to the halfway point yet. And you can see how intently he's watching too, Randy Johnson. You know they all wanted to play against the Yankees. Yeah. Utley's never faced the unit. He's never faced the Yankees before. He wasn't going to miss this game. He's fouled off three after going 0 and 2 on the count. Utley waiting one outside. Ore Posada wanted it out there to try and get him to chase it. One ball, two strike count on Chase Utley. Take a look at the improvement that he has had against left-handed pitching this year. About 215 last year, right at 200 the year before. This is everything and more that you would want from a number one draft pick as he was from UCLA in 2000. He loves this home ballpark. He hits 322 here at home. Hits the ground ball towards second base. Robinson Cano makes the nice scoop running throw and gets the out. Utley is retired a 1 2 3 inning for Randy Johnson. When we come back we'll see Robinson Cano at the plate. Bat in hand. No score. Well if you like to have some great grub. This is a ballpark to come to. Ribs, chicken, steaks, the long the bowls enough. out there. Greg Luzinski got his own barbecue shop. One of the uh, great sluggers in Philadelphia Ooh, history. Now uh, runs his own concession out there. As Robinson Cano stands in, takes a strike. I'm sure you can get a good Philly cheesesteak. You can find one of those guaranteed. Cano has put up some great numbers for the Yankees. That from a player. Batting down there in that number eight spot or seventh spot in the lineup. A comebacker, Myers has it. Gets the quick out. Couple of pitches, one away. Now a Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Back to the studios, Jay Harris. Jay Harris at the Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Doug Waite removed the brace from his separated right shoulder, laced up his skates, took to the ice with his Carolina teammates this morning. No word, though, on whether he'll skate tonight, Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals. Also, former champ Lindsey Davenport pulled out of Wimbledon because of a back injury. She hasn't played since aggravating her back in mid-March. Next Sports Center, 11 p.m. Eastern, constant updates on mobile ESPN. Jay, thank you very much. One down here, no score in Philadelphia. Rick Sutcliffe, Duke Castiglione on the field. I'm Gary Thorne, and nice to have you with us here for our Monday night baseball game. Bubba Crosby getting back with the Yankees, and they certainly needed him. A role player, bench player, who may be a little more than that with the injuries they've suffered. He gets back and is playing in right field in tonight's game. Well, Joe Torrey knows that Bubba Crosby played well for him down the stretch a year ago, so much so that in the playoffs, he got an opportunity for Joe Torrey to start a couple of those games. Whereas we had a hamstring problem, kept him out. He came back last Thursday. Myers pitch will miss inside to it, and it's a two ball, one strike count. I felt sorry for Bubba Crosby in batting practice, though. Take a look at the big unit. <laughs> Looking for the long ball. I didn't even see him out there swinging. I don't know if he took batting practice or not. Maybe he did it down below in the cages, but Bubba Crosby's in the group with Giambi, A Rod, and Posada. I mean they're 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 hitting them into the second and third decks here entertaining this I, I think mostly Yankee crowd tonight during batting practice and Bubba Crosby was bunting for base hits. <laughs> he just needs to get on now and hope that the big unit can get down a sacrifice bunt. Two ball two strike count from Myers who gets the pitch to him on the inside corner. Couple of strikeouts for him two away here in the second inning. Well, Myers has got a breaking ball that actually can buckle announcers up here in the booth. You take a look at the big breaking ball coming down right on the zone. Take a look at him right here. He kind of gives up on it. There he starts to bend, and he too got a good look at it and knew that that was the end of that at bat. So a quick two down. Now here's Randy Johnson sends the crowd a buzzing. He takes the first pitch, showing that discretion still is the better part of valor. 
He has had one hit in 15 at bats in interleague play this season. Randy Johnson thought about it, stays away, and a one ball, one strike count. Hard to believe I lost a dinner to this guy. Take a look at how bad that check swing there looked. I was laughing at him in batting practice a few years ago with Arizona. He said, Give me one pitch and I'll hit a home run. Give me one swing. I said, Man, you, you can have that bet all day long. And I'm not kidding you, he hit it out. <laughs> My guess is somebody just won some money in the Yankee dugout on that foul ball, too. I guarantee you there were some bets on that. Look at that strike zone. That's the biggest strike zone in baseball. The Myers <laughs> went down to the bottom of it. And now the Yankees see the difference in the American and National Leagues. <laughs> when your pitcher hits, that barrel will be up to the plate. Great years there, but some big, big years have followed that here with the New York Yankees. And now pitching here in tonight's game, and what numbers? Well, no question about it. A first ballot Hall of Famer. You look at the career record there, 31st on the all-time win list. I think he was the greatest free agent signing ever. When Arizona got him in 99, he won four straight Cy Young Awards for that club. It's an amazing accomplishment. Pat Burrell leading it off here. Burrell putting up the power numbers, 18 home runs, 50 RBIs for him, batting in the cleanup spot, takes that to third, and that's a foul ball. Talking about the all-time K's. He is there amongst the great names in that department. You think that might have had a little bit to do with the Rocket deciding, hey, you know what? I'm going to play one more year and maybe throw up about 80 more strikeouts, maybe 100 more, and make sure I stay behind my guy, Nolan Ryan. Left hander's getting too close. <laughs> Randy Johnson without a strikeout yet in this game. Pat Burrow waiting on it. We'll take a fastball on the inside corner and uh, go up on that tally board. So Burrell is out of there. We have uh, Jay Harris, John Crock, who, according to my partner, just got done eating Philly cheesesteaks. Take it away. You know he's out of you, you know he did, Gary. Uh, update now on the ESPN alert. Nats and Red Sox, Jose Vidro. Goodbye. Well, I tell you what, he's been swinging a hot bat. So look for him to be in Pittsburgh in the All-Star game. Nat cheesesteak shot. Nats up to this. Back to you guys. Oh. I, I saw their retaliation there. We may have to send that to Bob Watson. I'm not sure. <laughs> the Yankees are one game behind Boston, by the way, coming into today's play as they lost two out of three against Washington, including a late loss against the Nationals in yesterday's game. Aaron Rowan up will take the fastball for a strike. Rowan has had one hit off Randy Johnson in his career, one for four, and that was a home run. The center fielder. Trying to get on here behind on the count 0 and 2, and he does. He's got a base hit. Nice, easy swing and a single with one down. But I'll tell you what, it was not the best jump or first step on the part of Alex Rodriguez. That first step is every bit as important as the last. You see that ball hit? I mean, he hadn't moved at all, and then all of a sudden the stutter step, and even Derek Jeter looking at him kind of had his leg out like. That was a ball that could have been caught. He had no reaction off the bat on that break. You know, and you mentioned earlier, he's been booed mostly because of his defensive problems. Coming into play tonight, he's already committed 11 errors. And, you know, sometimes you just you don't want that ball hit to you. All right, Bell has had the most at bats of any other any of the Phillies against Randy Johnson nine for twenty five with a couple of home runs so Bell is playing at third talking to him before the game about that he said Set, that happened a long time, time ago, ago. <laughs> but I reminded him that that Randy Johnson threw a lot harder than this one Bell has not hit left handers this year he's hitting 211 against lefties 277 against right handers and a change up outside one and oh how many times do you see Randy Johnson throw an off speed pitch on the first pitch to a batter? You know, I'll be honest with you, more than anything, I didn't think he looked comfortable in the stretch. I mean, he looked real centered. His mechanics looked real good out of the windup, but now with the base hit by Rowan, he's in a different position. Very short lead, runner going, hit and run. Jorge Posada, see you later. Jeter got. Or Cano got spiked a little bit on that. 
tell you what, though, the big unit with all those strikeouts we mentioned, that's a tough guy to hit and run against. David Bell is good a hit and run guy as you would want, but with the big unit up, that was a borderline pitch out there. As a left handed pitcher, you can see the runner going. And if you're going to throw a fastball away, just leave it well off the plate to where your catcher can get it and the hitter cannot. That's all the big unit did there, and he picked up the big out. And I, I thought it was a spike that got him, but it may not have been as he put that tag on. I, I, I do think he got a little tear right on the wrist area. Cano did when he laid that. Tag he was on. just protecting his catcher and Posada was even vocal in the paper saying, hey, you know what? Uh, you know, I appreciate what my pitcher did for me. And he didn't throw as hard as he could either. Rick to, his, to Randy Johnson's credit. He didn't just blast one. He took something off that pitch. I mean, it was enough. So you're going to feel it. But it was also intended to make a statement, and it did. He did what he had to he do. He did what he had to do. Cano stays in the ball game. Got a little freeze it on that hand there. Now there are two down. David Bell at the plate when the base runner was thrown out. Aaron Rowan trying to steal second. One ball, one strike, two down. A little help from your catcher in return right there for Randy Johnson. No, and I think too it was all Randy Johnson. He saw the guy take off. He knew that. Posada could get to the ball up and out over the plate. There was nothing David Bell could do on that pitch. Chance to get through the inning, facing only three here. Bell a little late on that one, fouls it back. Two ball, two strike count on the Phillies third baseman. Those are the numbers we were talking about that he has against Randy Johnson. The irony being, he's not hitting well against lefties this year with a 2 11 mark. I don't think he's been the same player. Since the hip and back injuries got him when he first got here to fill it. Drives that one to right center field. Crosby is there, puts it away, and that's that. In the second, no runs, one hit, no errors. Had to face only three. Top of the order coming up for the Yankees when we come back to Philly Cheesesteak Country. No score here. Yankees at Philadelphia. All time. The Yankees lead the Phillies 8 7 in interleague uh, records. Johnny Damon leading it off for the Yankees as we go to the third inning. A strikeout victim, his first time up. Damon has had great success in interleague play all time. He and Derek Jeter are two of the best numbers wise in interleague games. Damon's first in runs, third in hits, fourth in total bases. And number one in most interleague games played in the majors. 1 1 delivery. Myers pitch just misses inside to him and a 2 1 count. Damon doing what the Yankees had hoped. He's getting on base and he is scoring. In the American League, Johnny Damon is ninth right now in runs scored. And wallops that one, but foul. Damon gave a really nice compliment to Milky Cabrera in the on deck circle. Earlier today, when he talked about he came up on a losing team the first six years he played. There's Cabrera, who also plays in the outfield for him. All of a sudden, I mean, you're at Yankee Stadium. You're 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 <laughs> you're expected to play right away. Myers. And you know what? I mean, that to a, a young outfielder, that has to mean a lot. Somebody like Cabrera. You know, trying to get their confidence up, only hitting around 250. To hear somebody like Johnny Damon mention that, and then go back and look at what he's done defensively. This is a 2-1 ball game on June the 6th against Boston. That's a home run for Manny Ramirez. Look at that. Nobody in the stadium was happier than was Johnny Damon. He knew what a great play that was. You know what? Sometimes you don't have to drive in runs. You keep them from scoring runs. You can still win the game. Elke Cabrera getting the start in left field. He popped out his first time up. Shows butt, takes it inside. He, like many young players that comes to the majors and has a, an explosive start, finds that it's not that easy. He's gone one for his last 14, four for his last 25. The scouting reports start to show up. They find your holes. Next thing you know, pitches you weren't seeing early, you now start seeing in a different location. Now you find out whether you can make the adjustments that you have to make in order to respond to the pitchers. Myers 2 0 pitches there for a strike on the inside corner, 2 and 1. He is a switch hitter. And he was saying today the reason he got the switch hitting when he was a kid, if he ever made an out, he hit the other way the next time up. So he'd hit, make it out. 
Come to the plate the next time, bat the other way. <laughs> Make an out. Come to the plate the next time, turn around the other way again. So that's how I became a switch hitter. I said it was lucky you didn't get a lot of hits. <laughs> you never would have been a switch hitter. And swung on and missed. Tag put on. So is he going to come up and hit right handed the next time, no matter what? It depends who's on the mound. <laughs> you know, you talk about guys making adjustments. Ryan Howard, that, well, what, what a great kid. What I mean, talking to him before the game, the adjustments that he has made from his rookie year a year ago to what he did yesterday. Look at that. Pat Burrell saying before the game, when he hits a ball to left field on the line, for most people, it's a single to left. That ball gets in the air for Ryan Howard. It stays in the air a long time. That ball went out of the park. Derek Jeter will take the pitch outside. Howard is third in home runs and fourth in RBIs in the National League for the Phillies. Not playing tonight, though, because of the big unit on the mound. <laughs> Derek Jeter drew a walk, was left stranded. The Yankees left the bases loaded in the first inning against Myers. Jeter will take it outside to an open. Think about Jeter in interleague play. He is first all time in hits and second in runs in interleague games since they commenced. Well, because he uses the opposite field so well. You're seeing pitchers that normally you haven't seen before. And, you know, he's just so patient. He waits on the ball to get to him. Gets the good count as he does here. Gets ahead on it. He'd like to have that one. He got the fastball he was looking for, two and one. Yeah, but what he's learned is that there's a lot of life to that fastball of Brett Myers. That was not only at 94, Jeter can handle that, but it's got that little hop at the end of it that the good fastball has. He can quicken that up and shorten the stroke a little bit to get to it if he gets it again. Jeter's not had a home run in the last 103 at bats. Long time for him. Second longest, in fact, in his career. Don't you think he's hurt a little bit? I mean, that's yeah. Thumb, remember I agree. Rodrigo Lopez hitting. Remember the slide at second when he hurt his palm and had to miss a day or two. I mean, you, you hit with your legs and your hands, and when there's something wrong with one of them, it, it's. It's hard and more that's another reason Ricky goes the other way yeah. so much because he's not he hasn't got full strength in his hands to hang on to that bat and bring it around so he'll he'll take that ball the other way to the gap and you know if you're Joe Torrey do you want Derek Jeter at 85 90 percent or anybody else at 100 percent you want Derek Jeter <laughs> period <laughs> put any percentage you want behind it and he's still putting up the tremendous numbers you see the longest drought since September of 03 when it was 118 at bats. That time he got jammed, fouls it back. And you can almost see after pitches that it hurts a little bit because he'll, one hand he'll take off the bat, shake, other one take off. And I'm not talking about that routine, which he does anyway, but sometimes he's squeezing the bat so hard so he doesn't let go of it when it hurts. I mean, he's just squeezing the sawdust out of it. And a chopper towards third that'll go foul stays at three and two. A look here as we go back. Derek Jeter, Rodrigo Lopez on the mound, and just nowhere to go. That was on June the 4th, and I'll guarantee you, as we are today at June the 19th, that thing's still sore right now. And you know, I noticed too in the media. I talked to Derek earlier this afternoon. Next Monday on our Monday night game, that's his 32nd birthday. Who? Birthday ahead of time. Swung out and missed. The Myers has struck out five in three innings, and it's scoreless from Philadelphia. Presented by TD Ameritrade, and we are with you in Philadelphia. Interleague play series opening up first of three, no score so far. Randy Johnson and Myers going at it. Foul back, Fasano, Nunez. And then the pitcher Myers do up bottom third for Philadelphia and Gary just listening to this part of the lineup. I think truly Randy Johnson right now misses this this part of the National League where basically with most teams. I mean you've got an inning that you can go out there and coast. You can go at 75 80 percent and get through it without any runs being scored. When you face Boston you can't do that. No it is an entirely different ball game over the years since the designated hitter has been put in the. Average for the American League has gone up 20 points and consistently stayed there. Some variation, but it's consistently stayed there. It's not just the pitcher hitting ninth, it's what it does to the rest of your lineup. 
That one to shallow center field. It's in the Bermuda Triangle. And Johnny Damon sliding in nicely puts it away. And says, see? Get out of the way. Now Ryan Howard is not playing right now as a fan favorite. Jim Tomey was here in Philadelphia. Rick Sutcliffe caught up with Ryan Howard taking over for Jim Tomey maybe as a fan favorite. When they traded Jim Tomey to make room for you that 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 had to give you a lot of confidence. It did. Um, you know Tom. I mean I, I've wished him the best of luck all year and uh, he's out doing his thing. He's doing what he's been doing his entire career. And I mean I, I actually followed him uh, when I was younger. He was one of the guys that I did follow. And um, you know when, when they made that trade uh, for me it, it just showed me that they had confidence in, in me. It was one of those trades that worked out well for both teams. You get Aaron Rowan. You solidify your outfield defense. You get some toughness that might have been missing last year. You create a spot at first base for the rookie of the year. And I think even Jim Tomey, if he were to be honest with himself, playing defense 155, 160 games as he would have to do in the National League, uh, you know, he might not be able to do that right now with all that he goes through with his back. He can play first base from time to time if needed, but he could always hit. There you see the players here in Philadelphia who have won that rookie of the year status. Roland, the last one before Howard, that was in 97. Allen Sanford before that. And uh, he's making a big difference in his sophomore year. Another comebacker by Myers. It's going to be a one, two, three inning. Seven pitches is all it took for the big unit to get it done there. So the two pitchers dominating early. No score. One of the reasons Philadelphia is trailing the New York Mets in that East in the National League by nine and a half is their inability to win at home. They are 17 and 21 here at a ballpark built for hitters and they thought they had a team built for this ballpark. But right now it is not working out that way for Philadelphia and they've got to put some W's up at home. You know but they still think they have a rotation that can win in this ballpark particularly with all the runs their offense is capable of scoring. If they could get John Lieber back in the next two weeks, Randy Wolf maybe in the next week, Mike Lieberthal, the catcher, says he's only a week away. They could get a lot better. Jason Giambi will take that pitch for a strike. He had a single. The only hit so far. There is Wolf. Rehab start scheduled for tomorrow and then hopefully on his way back. Boy, the pitching situation around Major League Baseball, a disaster. Oh, one delivery. Way back right field. Nineteenth home run, fourth in the league, fifty fourth RBI. He led the American League in on base percentage last year. He's drawn a lot of walks this year, but you know what? Every now and then, don't forget, Jason Giambi can swing the bat. Those fans in that second level up here are real happy today. That one is going to be a shot into the corner. Burrow going over to get it. Rodriguez on his way to second base. A Rod will go in standing. A double, a six game hit streak. And his bat looks as though it's back. Well, and here has been the problem for Brett Myers, particularly the last two starts and really throughout his professional career. Something goes wrong. He makes a mistake. Giambi hits it out, and what happens? He just compounds that problem by continuing to make bad pitches. Clearly not down and away, up and in, and clearly hit hard once again. He has got to gather himself right now and keep Alex Rodriguez from scoring because the way Randy Johnson's going, he may have already lost the game. A one nothing lead for the Yankees who now have three hits. Jorge Posada popped out his first time up, did it with the bases loaded in the first inning. He's got a runner on at second base. And nobody out. That's going to be the 12th home run surrendered by Myers this season. Three, only three to left-handers. John be getting that third by a lefty. Oh, one delivery of fastball just misses. It is up high. There's Jason Giambi, 19th home run of the year. And I mean, he lashed that. Not a lot of balls end up in that second deck. Did you notice right where he went after that homer? Right to former Yankee MVP Don Mattingly, their hitting coach, to find out hey, what'd you see? 
You know, obviously it takes a perfect swing to hit a ball that far, but you know what? There might have been something earlier in the at bat that Mattingly noticed that all of a sudden Giambi said, hey, I need to know now. I'm not sitting by you as a designated hitter. I got to go play first base here in the National League. Whatever Don says, the Yankees listen. One ball, two strike delivery to Posada's in the dirt. Good stop made by Posano to hold the runner on at second base. Posano has really done a good job here. I mean, he's a career backup guy. But I'm telling you, when I talk to the rotation and a lot of the infielders before the game, he blocks home plate with balls in the dirt and with runners coming in trying to score as well as anybody has this year. A Rod good lead at second base. Jorge Posada fouls it off. The Yankees are sixth in home runs in the American League. They are a balanced team. They they do it by they get on base. They're first in on base percentage, sixth in slugging, and fifth in ERA. It's it's a balanced Yankee club that's been able to hold it together. Philadelphia, on the other hand, they're like the old Orioles. They are a home run team. Their runs come in clumps. They rely on the long ball to get it done because their batting average is not all that good, but their RBI production. Has been there. Two ball, two strike count. Ore Posada, a rod off second base. He rips it into the seats. And that will bring Posada up to have a word with Myers. Yeah, Myers called him out because he couldn't get him on the hook on the pitch before that. He tried to cut fastball in. That ball too was hit hard. And he's saying, "All right, that's my two best pitches. What what do you think I should try right here? We'll see with this pitch what Fasano's thought was." Looking at his feet. Where Jorge Posada is setting up a fastball outside off the mitt that missed, and a three ball, two strike count. And Myers, who has walked one, struck out five in trouble here in the fourth inning. Giambi's home run to lead it off, then A Rod coming up with a double. Now Posada. Cano waiting on deck for his chance. 3 2 taken and walked him. Let's take a look at the game track presented by Motel 6. The Yankees had a big chance early with two down. They then loaded the bases. Jorge Posada had the opportunity, but Myers worked his way out of it with a pop up on the third base side, handled by Bell. That would end the inning, and the Yankees left them loaded. The Yankees, however, against Myers, strikeouts, five of them so far. Two in the second inning bottom part of the order and then he has struck out the two and three hitters. Giambi with a home run has now got a single and a homer. That was his 19th to put the Yankees on the board and give him a lead. And Gary, just like we could see there all of the strikeouts were coming on the big curveball from Brett Myers. And the second time through the order you know that Don Mattingly has sold the New York Yankees. You know what do one of two things either avoid that pitch early in the count or with two strikes look for it. Well, this is where they're going to find out if he can settle down or not. After the home run, Rodriguez came right back and shot a double down the left field side. Jorge Posada, the third walk, surrendered. And now a chance for Cano grounded out his first time up. One of the big numbers I saw looking at, at Myers. Hitters do a number on him when he's working out of the stretch and when there are runners on base. 344 with runners on base, 226 when the bases are empty. I mean, that's an unbelievable number right there for a guy that has the ability that Brett Myers has. I mean, to me, that's just a clear lack of concentration, maybe even just giving in, just getting frustrated and throwing rather than making pitches as he's can. Here's the 0 1 delivery. Some of that, Rick, we sometimes can come from they don't like working out of the out of the stretch they're not comfortable nobody does <laughs> no <laughs> no and you get all the relievers though who's many who will not work out of the wind up well because you know it, it, it's so rare when they come in it might be a week between appearances for say Mariano Rivera and it's hard it'd be like a switch hitter keeping both swings together as it is with both deliveries he's got to work out of the stretch here runners off first and second base and Cano fouls that one off. And Myers stays ahead on the count here. Two strikes. Still nobody out. Well, this was a great pitch, but he's so predictable right now. The count's 0 2. What is it? It's the big curveball that he got the five strikeouts on. In the back of the Yankees' minds, they're going, all right, that's what he's going to go to. 
If he'd have made a mistake with the location of that pitch, that ball would have been hit hard. He's got to prove that he can throw the fastball in for a strike to set up everything else. You know, it's hit only 239 with runners in scoring position himself this year. Chance to add to it, but he fouls that one off the plate and it bounces up and hits him in the leg. And it is still a two strike count. This has happened a number of times already in this game now, Rick, where Myers, he gets ahead, he gets 0 2, but he can't find the putaway pitch, either the pitch or the location for it. And the Yankees foul off a few and then keep an inning alive with a walk or another base hit. You know, Red Myers right now has to remember where he's at. Randy Johnson is just two hitters away. Get an out right here. Get the number eight hitter out and you're out of the inning. And he gets one as he went after a high strike. Six strikeouts. Let's check in with Jay Harris and John Crock. Gentlemen. Another update for you guys. From Cleveland Indians Cubs, Travis Havner. Goodbye. Travis, I tell you what, the Indians were as half as consistent as Travis Hafner's been this year. They'd be pushing the Tigers and the White Sox. 19 homers this year, career high 33. Cubs have lost six straight coming in. 3-3. Three, three. Boy, is Havner having himself uh, a year, and Cleveland after falling way behind, trying to get themselves back into it now. They're still six games under 500, lost three in a row after a pretty good stretch a couple of weeks ago. Well, there's still a lot of ability there, but Gary, to me, when they couldn't re sign Kevin Millwood, you had to figure that they were not going to be as good this year as they were last year. And they aren't. And Texas got Millwood, and they got a lot better. Bubba Crosby standing in, still first and second. Rodriguez, the lead runner. Jorge Posada on at first. Rodriguez trying to extend that lead here, keeping an eye on the shortstop behind him, Jimmy Rollins. Well, he's staring at Alex Rodriguez. He thinks that A Rod may be trying to give location. Got a strike on the inside corner. Crosby didn't like it. Boy, and that sets up everything. Look at the frustration on the part of Bubba Crosby. All right, he says he can't throw the fastball in for a strike. He's not done it all night. Well, he just did it. <laughs> now you might want to go with that big curveball, get you a ground ball, punch out the big unit, and the inning is over with. Ooh. That one caught home plate umpire Danley right flush. Was foul tip, and I don't think hit any part of Jorge Posada. It came right back on him. Maybe one of the young other umpires would like to come in here. Nobody's made a move. Erwin Danley down. Tim Welke is the crew chief. He's down at third base. I think he needs all the open space he can get right now. Right underneath Fasano. Oh. Yeah. Got any stories you want to tell? Uh, not particularly, no. It was a great book by Hemingway, though. <laughs> Old Man in the Sea. Want to remind you, it's a doubleheader on Wednesday Night Baseball presented by Goodyear ESPN, ESPN HD. We'll have it. 7 o'clock, it's the Mets and the Cincinnati Reds. Joe May is scheduled to go against Solar. The right-hander is 2-1. and one. 10 o'clock, Seattle Mariners and the Dodgers. That's all going to be coming your way Wednesday night baseball. You know, and thinking about next Monday, the 32nd birthday for Derek Jeter, um, we've heard that Randy Johnson will drop his appeal tomorrow, which will put him in line at home to pitch on Monday night baseball next week against the Atlanta Braves. We appreciate him doing that. The Braves may not, but we always like to have big stars, big names. <laughs> Pitching our games. So the big unit, if that holds true, and it looks like that is what he's going to do, will uh, indeed be pitching next Monday at Yankee Stadium against Atlanta. Kerwin Danley hanging in. As old catchers like to say, hang with them. And the fans appreciate it. And now he's going to say, What's the count? You swing at that? <laughs> I think he actually asked it. Well, <laughs> if I'm Myers right now, I go about six inches off that outside corner. And <laughs> what do you think, Danny wants to get this inning over with, too? See, Myers, see if you can get a little help. Two on. Rodriguez and Ode Posada. Jambis had the home run in the inning, a 1 0 lead, an 0 2 count. On Bubba Crosby, the number eight hitter, a strikeout victim, one of six. And Bubba Crosby takes a timeout at the plate. A 
A Rod extending that lead at second base. That one in the dirt. Stayed in front. Sano holding the runners where they are. That's such a comfort zone for a pitcher when you got a wide body catcher like Fasano and you can do this. One out. This ball gets by him. You got second and third. Now you'd probably have to intentionally walk Crosby to get Johnson up. You get him out. Then you still got to face Damon with the bases loaded. Fasano keeps all of that from happening. Myers gets the fastball in. Again, the Yankees able to fight that off. You see how many of these Yankee hitters do what they've done over the years, and that's extend these at bats. You know, and I, I think Myers is helping Crosby extend this at bat. Take a look. Fasano wanted the fastball away. Get it out there. See how the glove goes back towards home plate? You, you, you got a pitch to, to work with right here. It's one and two. You might get a generous outside corner if you're not high or not low with it, and maybe four or five inches off. Crosby trying to slow Myers down and change his rhythm here. Stepped out a couple of times against him. And swings and misses. He got him seven strikeouts now for Myers. Well, and my guess is that. As we end the bottom of the fourth inning, you're going to be saying the eight strikeout. Randy Johnson hadn't hit in a long time. There again is that good big curveball, the confidence in Fasano to keep it in front of him, and the out that he needed. Season high in strikeouts for Myers is eight. And he's only one shy of that right now. Now he gets Randy Johnson a strikeout victim and gets the first strike. So the home run. By Giambi started it. Rodriguez immediately responded with a double, and then the walk to Jorge Posada. And now Myers has struck out the next two. And we'll try and get Randy Johnson and end the inning. Pitch is there for a strike. Don't fool around here with the opposing pitcher who never gets to hit. And an 0-2 count with two down. Yankees leaving the bases loaded in the first and just may leave a couple more here. Randy Johnson is the eighth strikeout victim. One run, couple of hits, two are left on base. When we come back, it'll be time on Monday night for a little hot topic discussion about all stars. The ever famous Philly fanatic, noted along with the ball players here, has given the fans some great days and nights of entertainment between innings. The Yankees have taken the one nothing lead on Giambi's home run as we get set to go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Rick and I are going to have a little fun here. We have made our selections for the All-Star game for position players for each team and we didn't tell each other. So we don't know what they are. They're about to be revealed. We know all of you are creeping up towards your sets as we make this mention. <laughs> so hang in there ladies and gentlemen. Here's Rollins. Jimmy Rollins leading it off showed bunt a little bit anyway and takes it away. You know Ozzie Gian and Phil Gardner. I mean they've got their pencil they and paper are, out right they got now. The video machine going. Are you kidding? They want to. They want to make sure they don't miss a word <laughs> on these selections for the All Star game. Randy Johnson takes it outside. Rollins grounded out his first time up. He needs to get going from this side of the plate. I mean he's a 290 hitter a year ago. Coming into play tonight, hitting under 260 overall, and a lot less than that against left-handed pitching. First 3-0 count we have had from the big unit, and he gets a strike on the outside corner. You aren't kidding, Rick. He's hitting 214 right-handed, 271 on the other side of the plate. He's had uh, of the home runs six from the weak side. This one's going to go to center. Johnny Damon waving off the world. He's got it. All right, let's uh, take a look. Rick Sutcliffe, we're going to go through his picks. We'll do the National League this inning. Well, I, right off the bat, you know, I take a look at Eckstein leading off. You got to have a Cardinal flavor to it because they're winning. Utley, 105 RBIs a year ago. Cabrera, as good as they get. You know what? When you look at the American League lineup and all of their offense, to me, the key to my lineup is Brad Osmus as the catcher. You need a catcher that the home plate umpires like a lot. You know, you're going to need a good low strike. You're going to need some corners. And if anybody can get it for you, Brad Osmus can do that. Lake Torino popped out his first time up. One down, nobody on. Randy Johnson, one strikeout, no walks. Right hander takes it outside. You notice I added Soriano there, too. I got to admit that I. I, I Late change? I called Andy. I made a change on, I think it was Saturday after I saw the stolen bases. 
He got 17 on the year. Soriano's got all of the home runs, and I'm sorry, but I had to take Bobby Abreu out and put Soriano in there. I'll tell you, one of the toughest things to do was going through the list. I, I thought that there were a lot of players who deserved to be there, including this guy. Hotley who's playing first base but as a second baseman. It, there were some very tough choices when you looked at the years they were having. And and uh, I don't know about you but first rule for me and on the all star team is I the players who are having the best year this year is my first pick. And if they're close then I and then I look at career players good career players. Cano throws it away. It goes into the dugout. Victorino will take second base. That was a a desperate try for an out. He knew it was going to be tough to get and maybe better to just take your time. I, I think you're exactly right. And, and the one thing as an infielder you learn when you're off balance or you've got to hurry your throw or both. If you think down a first baseman might be able to help you. But when you throw it over the head of Jason Giambi nothing he can do. And now finally a runner in scoring position and an opportunity I think to steal a base here if you need to Victorino very quick Randy Johnson not very quick to home plate seventh error charge to Cano at second base this has been a problem for the Yankees the defensive posture behind their pitchers now you got a runner with one away in scoring position and here is Utley to the plate Derek Jeter will move in behind Victorino at second Utley grounded out his first time up could almost see when Cano made that throw he didn't want to do it. He knew when he let that thing go off balance heading towards center field that he probably should have held on. Breaking ball will miss one and oh. Right now it's so important for a middle infielder to really be a thorn in the third base coach's side. Derek Jeter's job right now you give up your position defensively to make sure that that third base coach has to holler back back to that base runner to keep him from getting a jump and stealing third with two outs defensively you move back it's the pitcher's responsibility now it's Jeter's Utley is fourth in the league at 380 with runners in scoring position he has been a tremendous offensive force in driving in runs for this team at second base and he's got an opportunity here to tie this ball game up. Two hits on the board for the Phillies, three for the Yankees, who got that lead in the last half inning. Jeter has moved even further over towards second base. Johnson not taking much of a look back there, though, and Jorge Posada is going to go out. Well, let's take a look at the. Uh, these were the picks I had uh, this is for a the All Star time game. Right here. Uh, you see yours, mine are on the right. I think Garcia Parra has earned it with a comeback player of the year. Over I love it, second base. Pool Holes, because of the injury, I didn't put him in. He will go to the All Star game and absolutely should. Scott Rowland at third base, take your pick, Cabrera, him. Omar Vizquel, because I want to watch him field, and he's put up some good offensive numbers, almost equal to David. Michael Barrett has the best catcher's numbers in the league offensively. May not be the great defensive catcher, I still like him. We both well, had Beltran. I like Bay. I think Pittsburgh needs to be recognized, and I put him in my uh, starting line. You know that I'll never argue with you having a cubby <laughs> in that lineup. Uh, Michael Barrett has done a great job, and with all of the injuries for the Cubs, Michael Barrett has been hitting third for Dusty Baker. And Matt Holliday is the forgotten one of uh, many forgotten players uh, with Colorado. They've got some great offensive players nobody knows about or hears about. Holliday is number one in outfield numbers offensively in the National League. So I put him in. So there. Well I'll bet he's on the team. Yeah I think he will be too. That one is ripped the third. That's going to be a base hit. Pat Burrow with two on. Here comes Victorino to score. Making the turn is Utley. He'll come without a play to the plate. Two RBI double. Two to one Phillies. Now 35 unearned runs 
for the New York Yankees. The error by Cano allowing the runner to get into scoring position. The great at bat on the part of Utley. He improved from his first time around. And then Pat Burrell in that cleanup spot, cleaning off the bases with the two run lead, excuse me, two to one lead now for the Phillies. Pat Burrell gets his ninth double, and he's got 52 RBIs. How do you get 52 RBIs when you're hitting 211 with runners in scoring position? Means you got a lot of chances. And uh, he took advantage of that one and gets two in. Still only one away. Aaron Rowan now at the plate. He's got an RBI chance here. Looks back at the home plate umpire on that one. It's an 0-2 count. He had a single his first time up and was taken out on a hit and run on a caught stealing. Rowan with a base hit. Randy Johnson now in trouble here in the fourth inning. Big cut on a heater, foul back, 0 and 2 still. Well, I, I think the biggest reason he's upset is, is once again, because of a play not being made, he had to go into the stretch. He couldn't throw a strike to Utley. He made a mistake to Burrell, and what could have been two outs and nobody on and a one to nothing lead and a left hander at home plate, all of a sudden now has, has been flip flop. Randy Johnson checking at second base and got him, blew that one in there. Gets his second strikeout and a big one right, right there as Roland goes down. Well, he, he was concerned about Victorino stealing third. He knows with the bad foot still for Pat Burrell, he's not going anywhere. He can focus on the hitter 95 miles an hour. You look at the intensity on the part. Andy Johnson not only mad at the fact that they got a couple runs, I'm sure he's mad at himself. And you know what? Look at that, mumbling to himself saying, all right. I put myself behind. I, I can't afford to put myself any further back. David Bell flied out to right his first time up. Both of these pitchers in this game have had their problems with runners on. We talked earlier about the numbers for Myers. Johnson's same problem. 304 as opposed to 226. Well, you know, on the back of his mind is that they're going to steal a base. They have Way outside. Running at will. On Randy again this year. 15 stolen bases, and most of the time, as a catcher, Jorge Posada has no chance. And it ch that's one thing, it changes everything, Rick. Your infielders have to play it differently. Yep. They have to be closer to the runners, guarding the bags, can't do the lines, can't play positionally the way they might like. That one is going to be a foul ball. Well, you just, Gary, as you mentioned, think about the double that Burrow hit. If Alex Rodriguez could have played at normal depth, Instead of coming in to protect third in case Victorino stole the base, that line drive he might have been able to get to. It could have been an out. So speed does so many things for you, and particularly with a guy like Randy Johnson, who historically didn't have to concern himself with, oh, it's still second, still third. I'm still going to strike the next two guys out. He is not able to do that right now at this point in his career. He has 71 strikeouts in 90 innings. You're talking about Randy Johnson. He used to be at least a strikeout an inning or better uh, with 10 or 11 strikeouts, 12 per nine innings pitch. Not anymore. And that's what Rick's talking about that makes such a big difference. Bell with a one ball, two strike count. And that one misses away. Randy Johnson took a little extra look in. Hoped he had the corner, didn't get it to and do. You know, I always look at the velocity too. It said 92 miles an hour. When Randy Johnson has a runner in scoring position, he always had that extra gear to go to. It was always 97 or above. He can't consistently find that gear right now. Looking for one here, he came back inside on him, got the location, but it's foul back, and the count holds the two balls and two strikes. Bell fighting him off, or a Posada going out. Talked maybe about what they want to do with this, with a runner on at second base in Burrow. Hey, what do I? Gary looking at the numbers for Randy Johnson last year as a New York Yankee 17 and 8 with a 3.79 <laughs> and a lot of people called it a bad year an off year well maybe by his standards that he has set throughout his career but not by anybody else's up to 5.32 is ERA this year took a little off that pitch Giambi got some room not enough did not get over there. He might have been able to reach in, but he's not a regular first baseman and uh, didn't get there. And not knowing the ballpark. He's never played here before. 
He did not know that there, look at that. If he gets back into that little corner, could he have made the play? I think you're right. I think if he had gotten there to begin with, he might have been able to reach out into the crowd and bring that ball back. Didn't get there in time, didn't know about that corner. Randy Johnson's got to make another pitch. And that one's fouled off. Randy Johnson threw 33 pitches in the first three innings. He's up to 26 in this inning. Both of these pitchers, the fourth inning, has stepped up and grabbed them. Giambi getting the home run in the fourth. Leadoff batter. Now in this inning, two RBI double picked up by Burrell is on at second base. Two down, two ball, two strike delivery on the way, and he got that one by him. So Randy Johnson gets a couple of strikeouts to finish it up here, but a couple of runs in on two hits with one left. Is he an all-star in the American League for Rick Sutcliffe? We'll find out when we come back. Young and old, day after Dad's Day. Dad's here with a lot of youngsters and Mom and a little rain coming down again. It did just before the game started. Both teams got MVP and everything, and then as soon as that was done, about 6 o'clock, they had to put the tarp out. Very light rain. And then it led up about the bottom of the first inning, and now a little bit of it here. That one is drilled near that fair pole, but it's going to be on the foul side of it. Well, I'll tell you what, take a look at this. Randy Johnson, Posada says, I need to talk to you. You're tipping your pitches. After all the pitches, look at him here. I mean, he, he, he stumbles right there trying to get down there. I mean, a little bit, Dave. And then all of a sudden, Jorge Posada. Randy Johnson has done this for years. Watch what Jorge Posada does with his hand. Curveball was the first one. Fastball was the second one. They're going, all right, all right, I get it. Particularly out of the stretch. I mean, he used to always give away his pitches, but you know what? They were so good, it didn't matter. He still got people out. Great shot right there. Foul territory, long run. And wow. What a play. What a play. Damon is retired. Pat Burrell becoming the star of this ball game. 30 30 update. Jay. Garrett, Doug Waite separated right shoulder, keeping him out of the lineup tonight for game seven of the Stanley Cup Finals. He skated this morning and said he just didn't feel like playing tonight, just didn't feel well enough. Hurricanes up 1 0 early over Edmonton. Also, former champion Lindsey Davenport pulled out of Wimbledon because of a back injury. She hadn't played since mid March. Next, Sports Center, 11 p.m. Eastern. Constant updates on mobile ESPN, guys. And that one to left field again. Burrell is there. Cabrera is retired. He's 0 for 3 already in the ball game, and Burrell gets a couple of puts out here put outs and there are two down here in the fifth inning for Myers Andy Johnson obviously frustrated because right now he's thinking about the pitch that he threw to Burl why did he have such a good swing sure I missed my location but it still had a lot on it but when you know what's coming <laughs> that's a lot of the battle and when Randy Johnson doesn't throw 98 anymore you got a chance and right now they've got a lead and to me, Brett Myers has got to make this lead hold for the next three innings and give him a chance to maybe get one or two more. Derek Jeter, has got a chance at a one, two, three inning. I think that was Johnson East who got that shot for us, did he not, down there? Great shot. Great shot. Part following. of our great camera crew here that never get enough credit. 1 0 -oh count. And there are two down. Sinise owns Chicago, by the way. If you ever want to go to the city and you need anything out of Chicago, you thought it was you, Sutton. I did. You not. thought you owned Chicago. Uh uh. Johnson East owns Chicago, baby. You just ask. 2 0 count. He's not related to one of my favorite actors, though. I don't think Gary Sinise. Just a tremendous Broadway and television star. John's just a TV doing star in the major world. Major sucking up. Right? There is. 2 0 count. He knows good restaurants in Chicago. That one's a base hit. So Jeter again keeps it going. Two out first inning. Got a walk. Two out fifth inning. Gets a single. He's on in the fifth. Little bitty things that so many times go unnoticed. Look at the glove. The glove of Fasano never moved. That pitch was right where they wanted. But Derek Jeter going to the opposite field as he does most of the time with two outs gets a base hit and gives a guy who homered in his last at bat an opportunity to give the Yankees the lead again. Giambi had that home run in the fourth inning is 19th. He's already two for two in this ball game with a home run and a single. Myers gets him with a fastball for a strike call. Giambi clocked one into the second deck here in Philadelphia, a ballpark that 
gives up a lot of homers last year second most home runs in the league were hit here in Philadelphia. And he was going for another one there and missed it. He didn't miss this one earlier though. Yeah, and you speak of last year, Fiambi, the comeback player of the year a year ago, player of the month in the American League in the month of April. And making a good run at that award once again here in the month of June. There you see Jim Tomey who's on top. 22, Die, Gloss, Ortiz, Giambi, and Travis Hafner we were talking about earlier. You talk about who ought to go to the All-Star game. Selections being made. Just take a look at the problems right there. You got Jim Tomey. Where's his name show up? Nowhere. He'll, he'll be there. Oh, he'll be there. Because his manager is the one picking he'll, the Oh, team. he'll be there. No question about that. 0-2 oh, delivery. Down to first. That is a fair ball right over the bag. Rolled into foul territory. Jeter's on his way to third. Good play in the corner to hold it to a single by Victorino. Played that one perfectly as it did not hit the side of the stands. And Giambi's three for three. Right down the line. Absolutely nothing that could be done. A good fastball up in the K zone. You see Utley getting off the line. The ball going right over the bag. And you're exactly right. Victor Reno got to this ball in a hurry, knowing that with two outs, Derek Jeter was off and running. But because of Victor Reno, Derek Jeter could not score the tying run. Rick, that's what we were talking about before, knowing the field. Yeah. He knew that corner well enough not to be worried about it hitting the side of the stands. They went over and put it away, and now first and third, two down. Arod had a double his last time up. He has also drawn a walk. He's got a six game hit streak going. Numbers starting on their way back up, 286. Talking about key hits that Alex Rodriguez has picked up this season. He is number one in game winning RBIs in the American League. He is number four in go ahead RBIs in the American League. And he is number two. In the offense and RBIs on the road. I mean, those are some clutch numbers for Alex Rodriguez. And he's got a chance to add to it here at first and third. Good off speed delivery. Exactly right. He was looking fastball here, but Myers, knowing that even though it's second base, he's got a base open right now with a one run lead, throws the off speed pitch, gets back into the count. Myers trying to get out of this inning. Is A-Rod ever going to be loved in New York? <laughs> There's 250 million reasons why why people don't want to like Alex Rodriguez. I mean that contract everybody has known about it. And there's absolutely no way anybody could put up the kind of numbers that people would think deserves that kind of money. But he was the best in the American League a year ago winning the MVP award. He'll make a run at it again this year. He is right now 33rd all time in home runs with 444. Jeff Bagwell ahead of him, and this time he's gone. And Myers has worked his way out of it again. He's got a career season eye and strikeouts with nine. No runs, two hits, two left on. A Rod's chance goes to Myers.